Hello and welcome to a video about the Alamy Lightroom Bridge. This is a plugin for Adobe Lightroom which interfaces directly with the Alamy Stock Image Agency. Now while they do provide online tools to manage your photos, of course, and to upload them, the Alamy Bridge ties all that directly into Lightroom so that you can see all of the Alamy information straight inside Lightroom. You don't need to go and have a look separately on the Alamy website. It manages the entire process from uploading through to exchanging information with Alamy so that you can control everything straight from inside Lightroom. So this video is going to be about the simplest part of the process, which is uploading your photos to Alamy. So I have a few here that I'm going to test with, and I'm just going to filter on the three star ones there. So I've already done the spotting and checking and straightening and all of the other things that you need to do for Alamy's QC process. That's their quality control. But there are a lot of technical things that you need to check for there most notably image size but also the image format, the quality and the color space and all of this is something that the plugin will check for you if you use that to upload. So because this is the simplest one it's actually very quick to demonstrate so all I'm going to do is go to file then export as is Lightroom's norm I haven't selected any of those which Lightroom interprets to mean use all of the photos and I'm going to select the Upload to Alamy exporter. You can use presets if that's what you prefer. You can use the Export Previous presets from there. That's all exactly Lightroom standard. But let's just go in there and upload to Alamy. Now, on the right hand side here, we have all of the Alamy specific information that you need to know. The first thing it's doing is the login button. Of course, you have to log into Alamy before you can upload photos to your account. Now, this is set to connect automatically, and it's saying login as default. What that's saying is that I only have one account set up in the plugin. The plugin will handle a number of different accounts. So, if you do have several different Alamy accounts for business reasons or different subject areas, then that's fine. It will handle that. Now, there's fewer settings in here than there are on some of the other operations. I'm going to switch Dummy Run off. If you hold your mouse over these, then it will give you some more information on what they do. So, as that one says, run through the entire process, but don't actually send the photos. That was originally put in just for me for testing, but that can be useful for people in general because it does let you see the final JPEGs before you send them to Alamy and if you're testing the plugin if you have changed settings for example and you want to make sure exactly what it is you're seeing then that is still a useful option. The show log on completion just says whether it opens a log file to say what it's done. I always leave that on myself but if you don't feel you need that then feel free to switch it off and these three options go together. Keep process JPEGs Many photographers will be shooting in RAW rather than JPEG, which is an entirely different subject which I'm not even going to broach on because I will be shot down by someone regardless. So Alamy require you to upload JPEGs, not RAW files. That means they need to be converted into JPEGs and because there's potentially other things going on here, it may be resized, it may be filtered, you can add custom filters into the export process for any exporter so it's possible that you have some kind of special external sharpening filter in there for example. I feel that it's useful to keep a copy of the actual JPEG that was sent to Alamy so that if there are any questions over QC or if something's rejected for reasons that you simply don't understand you can have a look at the actual file that was transmitted to them not the original which may well be different. And this control here simply tells it where to store the JPEGs. The next thing you can choose to do is import those JPEGs into the library. Again, I leave that on simply because it gives me an easy reference. If you're not keeping them, then obviously that's not an option. 
but it allows you to see both the original and the JPEG. And of course the JPEGs that are imported are the ones that are in this folder here. So they're not stacked with the original, it does keep them quite separate. Finally, you need to choose which image class you're uploading. Alamy provides several different classes. Stock is the standard one, but you can also have specialist classes, entertainment, news, archive, reportage, etc. You can only upload to most of these, if not all of them, if Alamy have already given you permission to. So although the plugin will allow you to do that upload, your photos will be rejected if you don't have permission. So if you're in any doubt whatsoever, please just leave it on stock. That is the standard option. Now if you're used to using the Lightroom file exporter, you're probably expecting to see a lot more sections down here to control. Most of those have been removed by the Alamy exporter. They're still available to everything else, of course, and just not for the Alamy one. The reason for that is that most of them are things that you don't want to do. For example, you don't want to add watermarks. You don't want to control sharpening because Alamy specifically say don't sharpen. So all of those things have been hidden and the appropriate options have been set there. What you can still do is choose your color space and the image quality, which should really always be at 95% or above. The file size is actually limited separately, but there's no reason that you can't set that yourself. The reason for that is that in the past I have had files rejected by Alamy for being too big, which is probably not a problem for most people now, but I was uploading scanned medium format slides and because of the resolution of the scanner some of those were very very large and they rejected them saying they were too small they just had a standard error message for there's something wrong with the size that caused both me and Alamy a certain amount of confusion so another thing that the plugin controls is the final file size and the scale to megabytes is also a custom option for Alamy you must have this enabled when you're uploading to Alamy because this is one of the key controls and it controls the megapixel size. Now rather confusingly Alamy used to specify their minimum file sizes in terms of megabytes. While Lightroom and most other programs will export in terms of megapixels and they are different. Color images would normally be 6 bytes per pixel Black and white images would typically be 2 bytes per pixel, and neither of these has anything at all to do with the actual file size on disk. These values here correspond to the Alamy defaults, and although they're saying minimum 20 megabytes, that's actually only 6.67, 6 and 2 thirds megapixels, although I seriously suggest uploading files that are bigger than that for stock. So everything in there is set, it's logged in, it's set to actually upload the resulting JPEGs to Alamy and I'm going to keep copies in my library just because I like to do that. So the only thing left to do is export. So Lightroom's now going to go away and process those and send them. And you can see in the top left there we have uploading to Alamy as OL and a number. That of course is the Alamy media reference that's different to the Alamy image reference. Basically it's a set of uploaded photos. Now the media reference doesn't actually matter for anything. Lightroom will store it for you, but it's only for your information. It's not used for matching or setting or anything like that. That's important because occasionally, not often, but occasionally, even though the plugin will be told by Alamy that it will be assigned this media reference, it actually won't. Uh, when you go and look at Alamy, it will have a different media reference. And of course, if you're using FTP upload, which is an entirely different method, then let me just switch that back. There is no media reference. So the plugin basically invents one starting with FTP instead of OL. And the correct media reference is assigned to your photos the first time you fetch. The fetch operation is going to Alamy and asking for all of the information that they have on your photos. 
So of course now I need to stop things because I have to wait for these photos to hopefully pass QC before I can carry on with the next part of the video. While that's going, I will go through some of the settings. If we go to File and Plugin Manager, down the left here of course we have everything that's plugged in. AI keywording, if you haven't come across it, uh, that will allow you to assign keywords to photos and it does tie into the Alamy Lightroom bridge so check that out if you haven't seen it www.lightroom-keywords.com Back on the Alamy Lightroom bridge we have the basic details email address, Alamy password which of course it does need because otherwise it can't identify itself to Alamy and the settings that affect uploading are all to be found under plugin settings with the main one being create submission collections what that does is it tells the plugin that every time you upload a new batch as I'm doing just now it creates a static collection for that batch now of course you can filter on the Alamy reference and the media reference so you could find out very easily which photos were sent in a batch but there is a problem with this if you do have a batch that is rejected by QC that can be simply because one photo in that batch was rejected the rest of them may be perfectly acceptable if you resend some of those photos then of course they will be assigned a new Alamy reference and a new media reference and you lose the record of where that photo has been updated in the past. So by creating these static submission collections it means that they're just stored there forever and you can always see which photos were submitted when. The important one in here really is the upload method. Online upload is using the exact same uploading method as you would use if you were using the Alamy website. It's identical to clicking their upload images button. The other option is FTP. This is something they made available a few years ago because people were having problems with the online uploader. FTP is an acronym for File Transfer Protocol. It's a very old-fashioned way of transferring files across the internet. The benefit of that is that it's also a very simple way of transferring files. That means there's less scope for things going wrong which means it's more reliable if you're uploading large batches. Normally I have to say I do just leave it on online upload but if you start having problems with online upload then please try the FTP upload and normally you can leave this as it is. Uh, FTP works in several different ways this is the standard one the other two are for specific situations which you will only be affected by if you have some very restrictive network settings which most people don't have. So in general leave it on online upload. So I'm going to click done on there and if I re-enable the attribute filter those were the ones that I asked to be sent and let's pick him for example if I come across to the metadata panel and select Alamy Plus then we can see that we have the Alamy URL that has the media reference and you can see straight away that a lot of the information here is not set the reason that's not set is simply that I hadn't set it before I sent it however one of the questions that we get very often is that people have set all of these things in Lightroom they then upload the photo and most of this information isn't transferred to Alamy immediately. Some of it is. The reason for that is that when you do an upload all you're sending is a JPEG. It's just an image and with that image you can also send embedded within the image industry standard information like captions and keywords and location. So all of these items, the location, there is no caption on here yet, but if the caption were there and if keywords were there, then they would have been sent. The Alamy specific information is not sent 
because there's no standard way of embedding that within a JPEG and that's entirely by design. It's not something that can be programmed round because Alamy are simply not looking for this information in a JPEG. This is the reason that you need to do a fetch and a set as the first thing after your photos have passed QC. So I am going to come back to these once, hopefully, they've passed QC and we will run through the first fetch. I'll go into excruciating levels of detail about how matching works because that is the most complex part of the whole process. And then I will set the keywords and a caption and some other information and we will send that back to Alamy and we will be able to see that all of this is exchanged with them. Until then, thanks for your attention so far. If you don't have the plugin yet, remember you can test it out for yourself for free just by downloading it from www.lightroom-plugins.com. Thanks very much.